It defined the nightlife culture of the 1970s. It spun into the party scene of the 1990s. And now, it's hanging in your living room. This is your sign. This is your sign. This is your sign to get a disco ball for your living room. How did a disco ball end up in there? Must be iconic. Welcome back to another episode of Iconic Objects, where we get all galaxy brain about the most popular furniture and home decor items ever. <laughs> this one's a fun one. I love a disco ball. I love to see them hanging up on a dance floor, or even above a bar. And I love this Yahoo article headline that says, if you don't have a disco ball hanging in your bedroom, what are you even doing? Well, personally, I have no idea what I'm doing, but what I do know is that this sphere covered in a bunch of mini mirrors has mysteriously found its way into home decor trends, and I'm here to find out why. Let's dig in. I was expecting to kick off the history section of this piece with a fun little deep dive into the 1970s nightlife era, the wonderful time that gave us disco in the first place. <laughs> I figured we could jump right into talking about Donna Summer, Soul Train, Synthesizers, Studio 54, and of course I hope to kick it off with a little bit of... And in this essay I will be discussing the lasting impact of John Travolta's solo dance performance in the 1977 American drama film Saturday Night Fever. Well, joke's on me. That stuff's gonna have to wait till later. Because I did some research and it turns out that the disco ball is decades older than disco itself. Woo! Okay, wow. <sighs> Haven't figured out the brakes. Let's regain our composure. In 1916, an inventor named Louis B. Wost filed a patent for something he called the Myriad Reflector, which I love because it sounds like the Star Trek version of a disco ball. And quote, to be used for exhibition or theatrical purposes for the production of effects. Ooh, effects you say. In the 1920s, Myriad Reflectors began selling. A 1922 bulletin in Electrical Merchandising Magazine wrote, they used to drop flowers or confetti on a swaying throng of dancers. Today, lighting is the means most used to gain the novel and beautiful effects that delight the fancy of the merrymakers. Merrymakers, you say? And it goes on. The newest novelty is one that will change a hall into a brilliant fairyland of flashing, changing, living colors, a place of a million colored sparks, darting and dancing, chasing one another, into every nook and corner filling the hall with dancing fireflies of a thousand hues. Electrical merchandising must have been staffed with poets because this stuff is good. The Myriad Reflector went on to adorn dance halls and ballrooms with cosmetic party magic. Event planners even leveraged it to promote their gatherings in newspaper ads. A new feature in installed at great expense. Dance to its entrancing lure. I mean, it's kind of brilliant if you think about it. Back then, they didn't have lasers or strobes or advanced lighting rakes and fog machines up in the club. So you take a ball, you cover it in thousands of teeny tiny mirrors, you point a flashlight at it, and you make it spin. Boom, baby, you got a vibe. The disco ball took on a couple different nicknames over the decades before it would become the mascot of the whole disco genre and subsequently a pop culture icon. Mirror ball, glitter ball, sonic sphere, okay? Our party globe was a hardworking extra, but in the 1970s, she became the main character. When disco arrived on the scene, it completely bedazzled nightlife. Having originated in underground clubs of Black, Latinx, and queer communities, the genre brought the euphoria of love and liberation and radical acceptance to the dance floor. It's no surprise that disco laid the foundation for modern dance culture today. It was crafted to be hypnotic. Disco music was cyclical and orchestral and totally mirrored the spinning sphere that orbited above the dance floor. Disco was a full atmospheric immersion. Feel good stuff. And so while the sensory bliss abounded, the mirror ball rebranded. It only took five decades, but the party sphere, formerly known as the Myriad Reflector, finally became the disco ball, a treasured symbol of nightlife, a maven of celebration an iconic object. Like the title of this show. Remember the title of the show? Okay. 
As time went on, newer dance music genres replaced disco, but our illustrious planetary ceiling decoration remained, carrying on disco's legacy of infusing rooms with unapologetic glamour. And today, that room is in your house. Now, I would like to posit a few reasons for how the disco ball got in there. Number one, broadly, there is a 1970s era interior design revival trend happening right now. 1970s furniture, color palette, kitsch, swag, and even the legendary conversation pit, love it, is making a return. There's just a general appreciation out there right now for the retro vibes. And I get it, 1970s spaces ruled. Number two, more people are learning to embrace the spectrum of maximalism. Previously, unless it was like a Victorian parlor, maximalism used to kind of get a bad rap. Today, people are beginning to realize that maximalism is a spectrum and you can fall at all different points along it. Whether it's designing an entire room to be completely decked out in accessories and detailing, or whether it's just adding one single element that's a little bit extra. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do the most and we celebrate doing the most. You gotta check out this Arc Digest tour of RuPaul's entire disco room, praise. Number three, I think that disco balls ended up in the home recently because somebody finally realized that disco balls can reflect daylight as well. Good morning, here's a light show. Who does not want to wake up like that? It's like the disco ball stumbled out of the club one morning after hundreds of years of nighttime partying and finally discovered the sunlight, truly the Edward Cullen of home decor. This is what I am. And point number four, disco balls are just freaking awesome. They're a good time. Glittering, dancing lights in my home 24 seven, a feel good vibe, yeah, I think I will. I think I'll take it. Because folks, interior design, yes, is about function, but it's also about a feeling. How does the space make you feel? Basically, I don't know if there's anybody who wouldn't want a glittering orb around that inspired such lyrics as staying alive and I feel love. <laughs> Even if it's just sitting on a windowsill or intentionally placed on the floor, a disco ball is like a little planet of positivity, an easy and inexpensive way to create an atmosphere. Speaking of atmospheres and planets, in 2018, an aerospace company called Rocket Labs launched the Humanity Star into Earth's orbit. People! It was a disco ball shaped satellite. Designed to orbit the planet for nine months, its sparkling surface would be visible to the naked eye at night. According to Rocket Labs, it was a bright symbol and reminder to all on Earth about our fragile place in the universe. Not gonna lie, that sounds pretty on the nose because I think each of us have at least once found ourselves in the club, staring up at a disco ball and pondering our existence. Unfortunately, the Humanity Star only orbited for a few weeks, eventually burning up as it returned to Earth's surface. Not gonna think about what kind of omen that is as I contemplate my existence, but hey, the intention was there. And while that mission might have failed, do you know what mission didn't? In 2019, Glitterbox, an event production company in Ibiza, launched a petition for iOS and Android to introduce a disco ball emoji. The petition states, every Friday and Saturday night, there are millions of people around the world crying out for this emoji, the only emoji worthy of kickstarting their weekend. Well, folks, it only took three years and 10,000 signatures, but in 2022, we finally got our humanity star. God, I love the internet. Today, disco ballification is everywhere. A dance club to living room to DIY project pipeline. You can disco ballify anything. Flower pots, animal sculptures, tiny little mushrooms. Dang, dude, I've even seen an entire bathroom coated in disco tiles. And Kelly Wurstler, champion of the melted disco ball decor trend, told Arc Digest, it instantly adds drama and play. And finally, we would be remiss to talk about the disco ballification renaissance without talking about the Beyonce renaissance. The beehive is the ball. From imparting upon us its myriad reflections to inspiring us to consider our place in the universe, thank you for tuning in to figure out why the disco ball is so dang iconic. Head on over to Wayfair to make all of your household disco dreams come true. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more culture shifting furniture and decor trends. I'll see you next time.